Hello, it's period students. Mr. Lawrence here, and I'm putting up a last minute review video for the important test we've been talking about. I wasn't planning on doing this, but after seeing how hard some of you have been working the past couple of days, I just thought, how could I not do it? Very proud of a lot of the efforts, people coming up second period, coming in at fourth period, coming in at sixth period, some coming in at lunch, staying after school, giving their best efforts in class. Um, I'm really seeing some positive things, so I want to reward you for that. Okay, so let's get down to it. Sorry about that interruption there. I, I had to talk to a teacher, and so there might be a couple seconds of dead time, but let's get down to it. First of all, we have to know how to add and subtract. Now remember, we always want to look to factor as much as possible. In problem number one here, there is no factoring possible. So I do need an LCD when I add and subtract. So I'm going to go looking for my LCD. Okay. Well, I know I need an X, and I know I need an X plus 2. Okay. Now, I look at my denominators. This is only for addition and subtraction. And I ask myself, what part of the LCD does my denominator not have? Well, in this first fraction, it doesn't have the x factor. And so, I'm going to multiply by x in the denominator, but I'm also going to multiply by x in the numerator. And that will change this fraction. It's not actually changing the value. It's just kind of blowing it up to make it look different. Now I look at my second fraction, I say, what is the denominator missing? Well, it's missing an x plus 2. But if I do it in the denominator, I'm going to do it in the numerator, turning that into a distribution situation, and I'm going to get 2x plus 4. Now that my denominators match, all I have to do with my numerators is combine like terms. So I've got a 5x and a 2x, so that's a 7x plus 4. That'll be over x times the quantity of x plus 2. Now, this is only true when x does not equal certain numbers. What are those numbers? Well, I'm going to look here, and I'm going to look here. And I'm going to ask myself, what numbers turn those denominators to 0? So, let's see. I can set the first one equal to 0. Oh, 0. I can solve the second one equal to 0. Solve for x, and I get negative 2. And so there is my sum, and there are the restrictions. Okay, second problem, very similar, although there is some factoring involved. I'm going to factor this guy as x plus 1, x minus 1. I'm going to go looking for the LCD. Well, it looks like I'm going to need an x plus 1. And I'm also looking for an x minus 1 to be in my LCD. Now that I have my entire denominator represented, I'm going to ask myself, what am I going to do to this first fraction so that it has the LCD? The answer, of course, is nothing, because it already does have the LCD. So, oh, by the way, I like to do this, change that to a plus and assign the negative there. What am I going to do to this fraction? Well, it already has an x plus 1 factor. I need an x minus 1. And so, I have a distribution situation, and I'm going to get negative 2x plus 2. My denominators match perfectly, and so I just have to combine terms in my numerator. So, I combine the like terms, and it looks like I have a negative 2x and a positive 5. And that'll be over the LCD. Now, that's only true when x is not certain numbers. And I'm going to go ahead and look here and here. And it looks like if I set those equal to 0 and solve, That's going to be x cannot be negative 1. And then if I do the other one, x can't be positive 1. And so here we go. All right, now we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing. These, I think, are way easier. Remember, I'm going to look to factor, then I'm going to look to simplify, and then I'm going to find my restrictions. So 
this first, this numerator here, 2x plus 4, there's a GCF hiding in there. So it's going to be 2 times the quantity of x plus 2. All right, so that's my new numerator of the first fraction. Okay, the denominator won't factor. The numerator of the second fraction won't factor. And the denominator of the second fraction is the difference of perfect squares. So it'll be x plus 2, x minus 2. All right, well, I right off the bat, I see an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. Now, I'm not seeing a whole lot else. I do see a two a's, and I know that we can come one-fourth. Okay, so now, that's a one-fourth. Um, I have 10 over 4, right, 10 fourths. Well, that's going to simplify also. I can divide them both by 2. And when I do that, I'm going to get 5 over 2. So this is going to turn into a 2, and this is going to turn into a 5. Now, the last thing I notice is I have... Uh, I have this x squared on this x to the fifth. Well, you should be able to simplify that. x to the fifth over x squared, that should simplify to x to the third in the numerator, right? So cancel that out. Cancel that out of x to the third. Now I'm going to rewrite what I have here. So on the first direction, I have 1 over 2 times 5 x cubed over x minus 2. And I don't see anything else that's going to simplify. So now I'll just multiply my numerators, and I'll multiply my denominators. And if you choose to distribute there, I don't mind. I say it's an extra step. It's unnecessary, so I don't distribute. Okay? Now, I do have to go back and find restrictions. What numbers x cannot equal? And when I do that, I'm going to Kind of look here, here, and here. Okay, so I know that this one tells me x cannot be 0. I know this one tells me x cannot be negative 2, and this, the other one tells me x cannot be positive 2. And there we go. I've got the whole problem done. And it's actually a little bit easier than what the other, the uh, addition and subtraction. We don't need to get a common denominator. Notice I never mentioned the words common denominator when talking about this problem. Sorry, I started circling the wrong thing. Okay, going to do another one here. I'm going to do some factoring. Well, this is a trinomial. That's one. I need two factors of 12 that add to get seven. Well, three and four. Here, GCF, 6 times the quantity. Oop, I didn't get the GCF. It's going to be 6x times the quantity of x plus 1. Okay, oops, I forgot to multiply and flip. Yeah, so right now I have x plus 3 over x plus 4 and 6x over x plus 1. I'm going to multiply by 36x cubed over x squared plus x minus 12. Still got some more factoring to do. It's underneath. There you go. All right, can't factor this numerator, but I can factor the denominator. I need two factors of 12 that subtract to get 1. Sounds like a positive 4 and a negative 3. So now I'm going to look to cancel out my numerator. I see an x plus 3 with a, oh, I don't see it. It tricked me. One's an x minus 3. So I can't do that. I do see an x plus 4 with another x plus 4. I see a 36 over 6. That's going to go in once, going to go in six times. I see an x cubed over x. That'll go in there, changing that to an x squared. So, my fractions look like this now, x plus 3 over x plus 1, and that will be multiplied by 6x squared over x minus 3. I'll multiply, 
and get uh, x plus 1, x minus 3. x cannot equal. I have to go back and look at my denominators. I'm going to have to look here. I'm going to have to look here. I'm also going to have to look here and here. And I got to look here because that number used to be in the denominator. Now, if you wanted, I could have highlighted these instead of, of those up there, but it really doesn't matter. So, this one tells me x cannot be 3. That one says it can't be negative 4. This one says it can't be negative 1. This one says it can't be 0. And this one would say 0 again, so I don't need to rewrite it. And there you go. All right, two more examples. I'm going to do some solving problems. Again, look to factor. Boom, going to factor. x plus 2, x minus 2. Now I do need to find my LCD. So it's going to be x plus 2. And then I also need an x minus 2. Okay. Now, with this one, I'm going to multiply all three fractions by the LCD. Why will I do this? Because it'll get rid of all my fractions. And here, I'm actually going to multiply by x squared minus 4. Remember, that's the factored form of my LCD. I got it from over here. So, when I do this, those will cancel with those, and I'll have 3. Here, these will cancel, leaving me an x minus 2. And here I'll have x squared minus 4. Is it quadratic or is it linear? Well, I think it's quadratic. I think so because of this. So I'm going to make it equal to 0. I'm going to combine like terms first. So I'm going to actually have x plus 1 equals x squared minus 4. Subtract x, subtract x, subtract 1, subtract 1. And I'm going to get x squared minus x minus 5 equals 0. Go to the quadratic formula. So let's see, x equal, I should do a, b, c. Easy as 1, negative 1, negative 5. All right, so I'm going to get 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 5. And that'll be over 2 times 1. x is going to equal 1 plus or minus 1 plus 20 over 2, which is going to equal 1 plus or minus rad 21 over 2. And so I'm going to get two answers. It's going to be approximately equal to two numbers. Hold on, I need to grab a calculator for these. Okay, so I've got my calculator, so I'm going to do 1 plus square root of 21. Well, divide it by 2, and I'm going to get about 2 and 79 hundredths. And then I'm going to do 1 minus and divide by 2. And I'm going to get about negative 1 and 79 hundredths. Okay. One more. Number 6. Need my LCD. I don't see any factoring I can do. So I'm going to need an x plus 2. No, an x plus 3, excuse me. I'm going to need an x minus 2. I'm going to go ahead and factor that, or FOIL that, only because I know I'm going to need it in a minute. All right, I'm going to multiply all three fractions by the LCD. I'm going to take that negative and assign them here. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply by x squared plus x minus 6. All right, put that over 1, put that over 1. I'm going to cancel there. And I'm going to get distribute, and I'm going to get x squared minus 2x. Here, these are going to cancel. 
going to distribute. I'm going to get a negative 2x minus 6. And here I'm going to get x squared plus x minus 6. All right. Going to go ahead and combine like terms. And it looks quadratic to me. I'm going to subtract x squared. And so I'm going to have a negative 4x minus 6 equals x minus 6. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Get a negative 5x minus 6 equals negative 6. Add 6 to both sides. Get negative 5x equals 0. Divide by negative 5. x is going to equal 0. Now I've got to check my answer and make sure it's not a restriction. And I don't believe it is, so I am done. All right, guys, I'm very proud of the work you've been doing the past week or so. Keep it up. We'll take a breath Monday. We'll go to D.C. for a couple of days. We'll come back, get ready for the final. All right, Mr. Lawrence signing off. Good night, everybody.